Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Tri-Cities Community Television. My name is Patrick McCarthy, and we're here in our Westwood studios at the Fountainhead in uh, Port Coquitlam. Uh, so today we have a, a guest, a person, Ali Tuchian, who's running for city council in Coquitlam. So welcome to the studio. Thank you very much, Patrick. So I know uh, the, the election is in October. So, I mean, and we're a few months away. So let, just let folks know, first thing, a little bit about yourself. Sure, Patrick. Thank you very much for having me in here in the studio. Uh, my name is Ali Tutian. I mm, arrived to Canada in 1999 uh, with my wife and my son. Later, of course, uh, the daughter I had. And in the past, uh, from the past 22, 33 years that I've been in Canada, 17 years of that, I've been in Coquitlam, living and working. Uh, I work in mm, Glen Eagle Secondary, working for a school district 43, and live in almost the same neighborhood. And then uh, my wife also l works in the same neighborhood, and we raised our family in here, happy to be in a Coquitlam resident. Yeah, so you're a teacher at Glen Eagle. So, that's so, uh, but, but, so why would, why, what made you want to run for municipal politics? Well, as a person, in fact, noticing the change in Coquitlam, and I was part of the change, uh, and I saw the change happening when I was in Glen Drive in a, one of the low rises before the high rises came. I noticed the, um, uh, the change of the city and things were added and my, my, my family benefited from all those housing that happened in Coquitlam and, uh, and the changes in uh, the um, strategic changes that I see in the Coquitlam um, being a bigger city. Uh, I noticed meanwhile that are things that are falling behind and I think that is the time for me to bring it to the attention of the city by being part of this process. At the same time, I believe the population of Iranians is uh, growing bigger in the Kukul and expected to be continued like that, I believe. And uh, I believe that we need to have a voice there to let the city know their um, expectations uh, their taste of a city, what they can uh, enjoy in the city, or uh, all those uh, cultural aspects that you can imagine from a minority that is now becoming a little bit bigger. Yeah, I, I, but what what do you find in the city that is that could be improved? I mean, in, in general, if I'm going to vote for you as a as a councillor, if I was in Coquitlam, like what are you seeing as some of the top issues that? that are concerning for most people in Coquitlam? Well, I, I believe and I trust that councils uh, for years that I'm following what is happening in the city, they have addressed and, and, addressed and checked a lot of uh, things that I would expect. And so and I'm very um, happy with the result of the uh, uh, previous councils at the city. However, um, one of my priorities of why I'm running for the city council is that the fact that Coquitlam is not providing enough entertainment uh, for, for its residents. Uh, for example, uh, if I'm a senior um, and uh, I wanted to have some fun during the days and weeks and to express myself culturally and socially, uh, it's very limited activities that can be offered to me, especially during the time uh, that is uh, winter time or rainy days, that which we have a lot in Coquitlam. Um, outdoor activities during the summer might be available. It does, they are available, but indoor activities require facilities that I think Coquitlam is falling behind. Seniors need help with that. And meanwhile, uh, young generation also feel the same. So, so for me, it's, um, um, I know that uh, I've, I've been lucky enough to own my house for many years. So I've done well from the, from the, the, the sense of the value of my house increasing, but I am in a catch 22. I have two boys, uh, 23 and plus, wow. and they, they basically cannot afford to live in this area. So what is your position on affordable housing in the tri cities? Well, I believe that cities should come with plans to establish uh, affordable housing for sure. That's always been in the agenda and it stays in the agenda. However, I would say giving a home to a person but not a whole life might be another issue. So why, why you need to have a house in here and then for every any entertainment activity, you have to end up to be maybe downtown Vancouver, for example, uh, to feel the moment 
that just giving a home to family might be good, very appreciated, but not good enough. So definitely we're going to use the lands that are available at, at Kukitlam to develop uh, affordable housing. But alongside those projects, we need to provide the, the, the residents with a lifestyle. Yeah, I, I guess, uh, and also too, like we're in the middle of a fentanyl crisis. We still have a fentanyl crisis. I think 1,300 people a, a year at least die. Yeah. And of course, you talk about the SkyTrain, or someone always talks about the end of the SkyTrain route. So that the kind of the that that fentanyl crisis is a factor within the Tri Cities as well. So how do you think a city can sort of um, address those kind of issues? Well, I believe that uh, strategic um, planning with uh, considering enough research is the key. Um, I'm I'm an academic person, if you want to call it that way, with my years of experience in research uh, as a doctoral level, uh, for example, person, I would be a person to bring that chance to the city council to uh, to do the proper survey and, and collect proper data before making decisions. I, I feel that like sometimes this is missing. Uh, money and uh, in fact, uh, asset is one side of any project. The other side of the project is how we spend the money effectively to, uh, to meet the needs of the people. So uh, last, last summer or in the spring there, we had a huge flood in the Abbotsford region. So yeah. up to that point, a lot of com uh, cities were, were, were aware of environmental impact, but really not uh, really you know, sort of had a plan. So what is your position on a resilient city dealing with uh, floods and fires uh, in the Tri-Cities? Well, uh, fires, I, I think we always been under the um, codes of the, um, of the buildings. I think nicely it's we're supposed to follow that. And as I said, with proper research, make sure that this code stays in uh, updated standards. And from the flood, again, we're going to study uh, adequately to see those areas, uh, recognize and identify the areas that might be uh, uh, influenced by any uh, similar situation. Um, I'm not sure at this moment how similar is the uh, structure in Kukitlong compared with Absport, but definitely we require to uh, study about it. Okay, and then the last question, is there anything I haven't asked you that you would you, you find that you would want to pass on to the citizens of Coquitlam? Oh, of course. Uh, citizens of Coquitlam should know uh, that as as we pass by the years in the Coquitlam city, not only the number of the residents has been changed, but also uh, the, the type of the people that are coming at this moment are different type of the people who come to the city, not necessarily those that are come to Canada as, as immigrants. Uh, we need uh, to understand the different needs of the people, and we need to hear them and uh, get them involved with the decision. So, uh, and I hope that I could be a person to, uh, to bring the voice of the people that are coming to our city. There might be a little bit shy approach uh, everybody, but they might be feeling comfortable to communicate with people like me. I'm um, communicating with students every day at the school and parents, and I see the diverse needs of, of, the, of the residents in Kukitlam. And I wish uh, the best for the Kukitlam people. Yeah, I, I think for me, when you said diverse, I mean, it's sort of, you know, we've got this uh, war in Ukraine. We've got a lot of immigrants from Afghanistan coming and Syria and now yeah. Ukraine. I, I still come back to the affordable housing aspect. You know, if I'm coming from another world and my my kids who are 23 years old cannot afford to buy a place yes, because they can't find a place that, that is less than $800,000, what, and the city itself has really, I'm not too sure how much social housing the city has, so I'd be curious to know, but but realistically, what's your message to those those individuals? A message to the individuals who come and find difficult to find a place uh, at Kukitlam to live or you, they find it mm, costly uh, is that come forward. If you, if you have opinion, share with the council. Let them know what kind of the housing you're looking for. And my, my message to the city council and the mayor is to look for the uh, scenarios and establishment that can bring the uh, affordable housing to the people. Uh, those um, factors that influence the price of the housing in Kukulam and has done before, has, has happened before, we should stop them uh, so prior that happens. So I, I think these are 
uh, um, decisions that council with the help of the mayor can do. So at least from now, we, we know that it's not getting any worse. So how do you see yourself as a counselor? I mean, obviously you, you're talking about entertainment, but if I if I had to kind of put it down to a few points, so your fin financial responsibility or like what is your key tenants of, of that you think you could bring as a counselor to Coquitlam? I'm, I'm a specialist in uh, educational technology. I believe that I can share that with the council regarding to research. And uh, I believe that I can make the connection between council and people by using the educational technology aspects and um, and methods. So the uh, city people need to know more about what is happening in the city and what are that they can expect from councils to do. A lot of people don't even know what is the council responsibility and what, how wide is the range of the expectations you can ask from them. Sometimes they approach me and ask me a question that is not even part of the council responsibility. So I, I believe that we need to educate people so they expect uh, whatever that councils can do. And also councils approach people more often and when I'm saying people, I'm, I'm not talking about the developers. No, what I'm expecting the next, next happen in counselors regarding to developers is tell the developers that you want to you make this high rise available in here for us, make one story of that for events, for indoor, uh, as an indoor arena for the events. It is, it is unfair that, for example, a family goes all the way from here to downtown Vancouver, for example, to having an, an indoor arena for a wedding party when there are 600 people like as guests. This is, this is not right. We, that's the maximum, the biggest thing that we have in Kukatlam is 320. So when we have the room for having all these um, events happening in our city. Ali, I want to thank you very much for coming into the studio. I know it's not a small thing to run for council. Certainly. So uh, we look forward to hearing more from you up to October. Thank you. So that's Ali Tutian. He's uh, running for council in the city of Coquitlam. If you want to know more about running for council in Coquitlam, it is October. So there's two things. Either you should consider running or B, ensure you vote. This is Patrick McCarthy reporting with Tri-Cities Community Television. Thank you. Thanks for coming. You're welcome.